Cyberpunk is receiving a major facelift, and with a blend of new mechanics and overhaul, Cyberpunk is now a fundamentally different game than when it launched years ago. In this beginner's guide, I'll equip you with everything you need to know, including all the new revamps and overhauls, helping you easily acclimate back to Night City if you're revisiting, or to learn about everything the game has to offer if you're brand new. Cyberpunk 2077 places you in the boots of V, a cyber-enhanced mercenary looking to climb the ranks. Set in Night City, a megalopolis of the future, this will be no easy task, as it's filled with ruthless gangs, even more ruthless corporations, and shady characters around every corner. You'll first have to create your V using the character creator, which includes how you look, your specific life path which includes either the street kid, nomad, or corpo origin story, and some starting attributes that help you build a certain character archetype. Your life path will depict how you get introduced to Night City, as well as give you new dialogue options. You'll also be able to pick attributes to build your character with, but I recommend starting the game without picking these first. First, because you'll be able to use them at any time when playing, and second, because you'll get a chance to see the different trees and options available before you spend your precious points. If you're picking up from a previous save, don't worry, you'll be able to redistribute your attribute points once. Also don't worry if you decide you want to change your appearance after the first set of menus. You can now change your look at Ripper Docks, and even swap out clothing at your apartment or your local clothing store, so you're never locked into a specific choice. Choosing between the street kid, nomad, and corporate life path will unlock additional dialogue options, a unique quest for each, and start you off in Night City in a different way. My personal favorite is the one I feel meshes best with the story, and that's the street kid. At the outset, you can also choose to either play through the entire story or just the Phantom Liberty expansion, but I really, really recommend, especially if you're new, that you play from the beginning and experience Cyberpunk as a complete package. After your introduction to the world and the main story, the open world will unlock and you'll be able to free roam Night City as you see fit. But do be careful of enemies with skulls over their heads. Night City features a variety of districts. This includes the Badlands, the desert outskirts of the city home to the Nomads, City Center, home of corporations like Militech and Arasaka, Haywood where you can find City Hall and is home to the Valentinos, Santo Domingo, an industrial district in the shadow of the Petrochem Dam that the 6th Street run, Watson where Tiger Claws and the Scavengers run their operations, Westbrook, home of the lavish North Oak and some of the city's up-and-coming corpos and celebs, as well as Pacifica and Dogtown, home of the Voodoo Boys, the Animals, and the Vargas Militia. You'll get to know each of these districts well in your travels across the main and side content in Cyberpunk, and Dogtown will unlock should you pick up the Phantom Liberty expansion. Phantom Liberty doesn't pick up right after the end of the base game, and instead ties into the middle of the story and offers specific expansion endings. Some of these endings will unlock a new base game ending, so if you want your true ending, make sure that you do consider picking up the expansion, which is excellent. If you guys need a little bit of help deciding if Phantom Liberty is right for you, I'll have a link in the pinned comment. Now Cyberpunk's open world offers a variety of different content types. First up we have main jobs, which include the main quest line as well as side quests. The main quests are found on the map with a black exclamation mark, whereas side quests are points of interest on the map with a yellow exclamation mark. If you're looking to progress the main quest line, prioritize these quests. Next up we have gigs, a personal favorite of mine, which are given out by fixers, the middlemen between the client and you the mercenary. Fixers will contact you if you're close or have a set path towards a gig, and there are a variety of different tasks that clients want you to do, which will line your pockets with eddies and increase your street cred, helping you unlock new vendors and opportunities. The first gig type is search and recover missions, where you'll get in and out and extract a valuable item, piece of tech, or a missing person. Agent saboteur gigs are where you get in and sabotage an operation by planting malware and devices. SOS type gigs require you to locate and rescue someone, and thievery gigs are where you need to steal something important. There are also special delivery gigs where you need to transport important cargo. Cyberpsycho sightings are spread throughout Night City and are a result of cyberpsychosis, which affects Night City citizens who decide to implant too many augmentations. Cyberpsychos are a threat to society, so it's your job to neutralize them before they have a chance to cause further chaos. You can either incapacitate cyberpsychos for Watson Fixer Regina, who's studying the condition of cyberpsychosis, or you can just flat out kill them. The choice is up to you. NCPD scanner hustles are reported crimes happening in the moment that police have yet to respond to. You can help out the police here as a contracted merc to take care of assaults, suspected crime activity, or even reported crimes. Vehicle contracts are a nice, infinitely replayable endgame activity where you have to steal cars for Fixer El Capitan. These missions will result in you getting chased or being timed, or may rely on you having to hack the vehicle first. Make sure that any wheel icon on the map is prioritized. After a certain time period, the wheel will disappear and the contract will go away, and you will have to wait for the next one. Installing cyberware is done through Ripper Docks found throughout the city, which we will touch on a little bit later. You can go here to install any and all augmentations. 
To survive in Night City and become a mercenary legend alongside Adam Smasher and Wayland Boa Boa, you'll have to level up and build out your character. Let's start off with perks, skills, and attributes. You're going to build your character by leveling up and acquiring attribute points, which you can put into 5 different attributes, including intelligence, tech, body, reflexes, and cool. Intelligence will be your main hacking and smart weapon skills. Tech will be where you can unlock tech weapon skills and the ability to further refine how you use cyberware and your capacity for cyberware. Reflexes will boost your mobility, blade related skills, and even some SMG specific traits. Body will unlock a new adrenaline system and strength based feats, and cool will help you upgrade your stealthing and knife throwing abilities. The best part about Cyberpunk is that you can mix and match your playstyles, but it can be valuable to pick two core attributes to focus on. With the new level cap being 60, you can really get a feel for all the skills with this hybrid build system. Alright, let's get into perks. There are four tiers of perks, Rookie, Pro, Phenom, and Legend. Rookie perks will require four attribute points in that specific tree. For example, Feline Footwork would unlock and be ready for your perk point if you have four attribute points in cool. Rookie perks will unlock at four attribute points, Pro will unlock at nine, Phenom at 15, and Legend at 20. With vehicle combat being an important new element in Cyberpunk, vehicle specific perks are spread out on different trees and unlock alongside the rookie perks. Don't forget that as you play the game, you'll get experience points simply for doing certain actions. Sprinting, shooting, hacking, etc. will carry you through a separate skill progression list that will unlock additional bonuses as you go. If you want a certain bonus, just repeat these certain actions and revolve your gameplay style around them. The next way to make your character more powerful is by weaponizing your body through installing cyberware. These are augmentations implanted into your body that can give you unique abilities and attributes, like the ability to slow time in the case of the Sandevistan and Kereznikov, get incredibly powerful punches with the gorilla arms, zoom in with your optical scanner from far distances, or even reinforce your skeleton to withstand more punishment when crouched in the case of the Scarab. To install cyberware, you have to go to a Ripperdoc clinic, surgeons who specialize in implantation. You'll find a variety of Ripper Docs across Night City, each with their own morals and ethics, or lack thereof, and can be found on the map with the cyberware icon. Installing cyberware now has a cost associated with it. Depending on your level, how many cyberware capacity shards you've picked up, and your skills, you'll be able to increase your tolerance for cyberware. Adding more augmentations will fill up the yellow bar on the left, and you won't be able to get past this certain threshold. You'll be able to enter this red range if you have this perk called Edge Runner, named after David Martinez from the Cyberpunk Edge Runners anime, an homage to his tolerance for cybernetics. If you do choose this perk, you'll be able to add augmentations that put you in this range, but at a cost of receiving health debuffs. The higher into the red bar you are, the more debuffs, and the higher level you are, the more these debuffs will scale. There are also perks for adding an extra slot to your hands and your skeleton system to add even more tech to your body, forcing you to think about balancing your upgrades. Cyberware will now also give you armor. It used to be clothing that is no more, meaning that balancing your cyberware tolerance with armor will be important. Fashion in Night City is a symbol of status, and you probably want to make your character look as stylish as possible. While clothing can still give you small stat modifiers, for the most part your clothing choices are going to be 100% for aesthetics. Transmog will allow you to save certain looks to be visible, while you wear more powerful gear underneath, allowing you to make your character look stylish, but still have the best stats possible. For example, helmets can offer armor, but if you prefer how your character looks without the helmet, you can remove the helmet with a transmog while retaining the plus 20 armor points. Relic skills which are tied to Dogtown and Phantom Liberty content help you further increase the power of your cyberware. By finding Militech data terminals across Dogtown, you can download military upgrades that help you fully maximize your abilities. This includes vulnerability analytics based skills which create red diamonds on your enemies that you have to break with damage that will cause an EMP explosion, adjustments to the way optical camo and invisibility cloaking augmentation works, as well as skills for the monowire, gorilla fist, projectile launch system, and mantis blade arm augmentations. The final piece to creating chaos in Night City and becoming a merc master is in the variety of weapons that Cyberpunk 2077 offers. Cyberpunk offers assault rifles, heavy machine guns, LMGs, pistols, blades, katanas, and more helping you become a more effective killer on the neon soaked streets of NC. Let's start off with damage types, which are chemical, electrical, physical, and thermal. All of these types of damage affect different kinds of enemies differently, and can apply different effects. For example, if you're using a thermal katana, there's a good chance you'll apply a burn effect, making your enemies take damage over time. Weapons all have classifications as well, which include power, smart, or tech for guns, and blunt or blade for melee weapons. Power weapons are your regular run-of-the-mill weapons with one key attribute. With power weapons, there's a chance to ricochet bullets off of surfaces. You can even see the ricochet trajectory if you have the relevant cyberware or if the weapon has a specific mod. Tech weapons are some of my favorites and are typically railgun styled weapons 
with slower rates of fire and charging mechanics, where you can hold down the trigger to power up shots. These shots can breach through obstacles, hitting enemies behind cover. These weapons pair nicely with the ping quick hack. Smart weapons allow you to lock onto targets and pepper them with homing bullets. These weapons synergize nicely with the vulnerability analytic relic skills I mentioned earlier, making it easier to target and break them. Melee weapons can be bladed like katana, swords, and throwing knives, or they can be blunt like your fists, baseball bats, clubs, and hammers. And Night City also offers non-lethal options as well if you're doing a pacifist run. Non-lethal weapons will only knock out your enemies and not outright kill them. There are even mods you can apply to your weapons to make them non-lethal. And while we're on the subject, yes you can find different scopes and additional mods for your weapons to further customize them. These can be useful for keeping those cyber psychos alive for Regina. Speaking of weapons, crafting has been changed quite heavily in Cyberpunk 2077, and you'll no longer need to spend points in your skill tree to unlock crafting legendary weapons. Crafting specs will drop from bosses and enemies, and you can even buy them at weapon vendors. Crafting materials from tier 1 to tier 5 will also drop, and all you'll need to do is loot enough to be able to craft these items in your menu. They can be found in a new spot within the menu, but it's still there for you to use. The way you heal and your grenade capacity has also changed with the 2.0 overhaul, and instead of having to craft hundreds of both of these, they're now both on a cooldown. After you've used your heals and grenades, you'll have to wait for a cooldown for those to reset. There are of course perks that give you more boosters and more grenades to use before that cooldown, but generally speaking if you're out of these, you'll benefit from playing a bit more passively until those reset. There are a multitude of different types of grenades from your traditional frags to your smokes, as well as different types of healing boosters, so keep that in mind as well. Picking up better versions of the healers will now automatically equip them. Let's get into netrunning and breach protocol, because these are some of the more unique mechanics that the game offers. Hacking in Cyberpunk 2077 can be done in a few ways. Since the net is a fractured mess in this universe, each location will usually have a subnet where enemies are connected to, and you can access these subnets through hacking devices through Breach Protocol. This will queue up a minigame where you need to input a code to upload daemon programs. Successfully inputting the code will unlock benefits, like reducing the cyber deck RAM cost to your quick hacks, or making your enemies more vulnerable. Sometimes it's nice to start off missions with the upper hand. Quick hacking is used by scanning enemies with your Kuroshi Eye Scanner. Once you've scanned an enemy, you can upload a hack. Hacks can be traceable, and if you use a traceable hack, then a countdown will begin. At the end of the countdown, your enemies will know your location, and will be able to track you down more effectively. Quick hacks consume cyberdeck RAM, and once you're out, you won't be able to upload anymore until a certain cooldown. You can spec into Overclock, a specific skill that uses your health instead of cyberdeck RAM, but otherwise it's useful to wait and bide your time before re-engaging with your hacks. If you choose certain breach protocol skills, you can also queue up multiple hacks, up to four on a single enemy, which makes for some really interesting combinations. Now getting hacked can be quite frustrating, and in game if you're in range of this red line, enemy netrunners can reboot your optics, set you on fire, disable your cyberware, or cripple your movement. So my best piece of advice for this is to beeline it straight to the netrunner and take them out, or prioritize the enemy that has tethered to the netrunner. Breaking the chain is how to avoid getting hacked. Stamina is another mechanic which we should talk about. Stamina is the yellow bar underneath your health that depletes when you swing your sword, shoot your weapon, or use your mobility skills. It will no longer drain while sprinting. Once your stamina is at zero, you won't be able to perform actions, so pacing yourself or specking into certain skills which improve stamina regeneration can be valuable. Most core skills have some sort of way to offset stamina costs, so over time as you level up, stamina cost should be less of an issue. If you're specking into body, adrenaline is yet another new mechanic that gets activated when you use health boosters or the blood pump cybernetic. This will give you an overshield of sorts that depletes based on the damage you've taken and will decay over time. Cyberpunk now features a much more immersive and realistic police system. Causing crimes in the city will flag the Night City Police Department, while causing crimes out in the Badlands will lead to a Militech response. Behind the walls of Dogtown, the bar guests are the policing faction and causing chaos there will lead to them hunting you down. Your wanted level goes up as you commit more crimes and the police response will match the severity of the chaos you cause. A 1 star response will lead to foot cops, motorcycles, and squad cars, but if you get up to the 4 and 5 star levels, you'll trigger drones, mechs, weaponized vehicles, heavily armored cops, and the apex predators of Night City, the Maxtac. Maxtac dropships will land on your position at a 5 star wanted level and feature a randomized squad of Maxtac officers. You can always flee, hide, or use a new identity swap cybernetics to lose the heat if you don't want the police chasing you anymore. Vehicle combat is another fantastic new addition to the game and helps up the intensity of police chases. You can now shoot while inside your car using pistols or SMGs, and you can use both of those alongside katanas on motorcycles. Aiming down sights while driving will allow you to be more precise, but you can also fire from the hip behind the wheel and the game will auto-target whatever your crosshair is closest to, making it much easier. 
Third person auto targeting is the easiest way to play, while first person manual targeting is the hardest. A little helpful bit of advice, but puncturing tires or an enemy's gas canister can help you win your vehicle combat encounters a little bit more quickly. Each vehicle handles differently, so make sure that you find something that you love to use. For me, it's the Rayfield Caliber, which you can find for free during the quest Ghost Town, right at the end of the tunnel before the exit. Some vehicles even have mounted missile racks or machine gun turrets strapped onto them. Don't forget the vehicle combat specific skills as well, that offer the ability to quick hack other vehicles, eject from your bikes and cars, and a variety of buffs to how much punishment your vehicle can take. If you find yourself really enjoying vehicle combat, they're tier 1 or rookie level perks and will only require one perk point. Cyberpunk 2077 is a dialogue driven RPG, meaning you'll have to make a lot of dialogue choices for your character that will progress the story and open up potential new narrative paths to explore. Yellow dialogue options will progress the story and will lock you into specific decisions, whereas blue options will let you gain more conversational contexts and additional details that can help influence your yellow dialogue decisions. There are life path specific dialogue options, dialogue options locked behind having a certain level of attributes, timed dialogue options where you need to make a choice swiftly, as well as other action based dialogue options that will be shown with icons. I always go with my gut reaction, but the game will purposely make decisions incredibly challenging at times, and you'll need to weigh your options. A little PSA here, but do read the emails and files on computers. It will not only help immerse you and add color to the world, but there's unique secrets and easter eggs scattered throughout these. As always, explore, take your time, and enjoy Night City. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you found this video useful, do consider subscribing, and I will catch you guys in the next video.